So today's lesson is all about looking at the equal sign and what do we do when number sentences are not equal and, and looking at the signs that we use. And then we'll kind of deepen our understanding of that through the problem solving tasks that we're going to do. Where we'll also think about things like, is there only one answer? Or in this uh, question, can there be different possible answers? So really looking forward to that. And let's start with just a little recap from the extension task from yesterday. And so we start today with this extend task from yesterday. Um, Amy bought some stickers that cost 65p. Four coins were exchanged with a shopkeeper. Which coins were exchanged? Now there are different possible answers. So what could Amy have given the shopkeeper and which coins could she have got in change? I think this is a question where it's possible to find an answer, but in knowing I found all the different answers, wow, the challenge is enormous there. Now, my system would to start be, is there a way that she could have paid 65p using exactly four coins? So I'll probably start with a 50p, and then a 5p, and a 5p, and a 5p. Now, the only way to make 15p, to add to that 50p, with three coins is a 5p, a 5p, and a 5p. So there we found one way, and we found one way of making, I'm gonna do a tally chart here, one way of making just 65p, four coins, no change. Now that can also be done with a 20p. I wouldn't be able to use a smaller coin than a 20 from a largest coin and a 20p. So three 20ps gets me to 60 and another one, 65p. There is two ways. No other ways of getting to 65p making the coins that we have. So I was thinking there, well, what can we try next? Well, how about if we get to 70p with three coins and then we could just get one coin in change. So um, if we got to 50, and you have to forgive me because I don't have, um, there we go. I don't have enough 10p coins, so I'm gonna use this one. I don't think I'm use this one in a shop, could I? Um, so that gets me to 70p. I could get 5p change from the shopkeeper. There is another way. Um, now I could pay 70p using two coins, a 50p and a 20p, um, but then I would be owed 5p change and the shopkeeper can't give me 5p change using two coins, so that we've used four coins in total. Um, so let's see if we can keep going. I'm gonna try 75p and then, there we go, and then I could get 10p change. So there's another way. Now I am gonna include this, even though the only thing I'd say about this is, I think if you actually went to the shop and you were paying for something with 65p, I think you would really, you would just pay with a 70p, uh, rather than giving this 5p coin. But anyway, let's not let that get in the way of a possible answer. Um, now, if I'm thinking about other ways where I could get changed, so I could go from 75p, and let's say I could think, well, 80p, um, but then I can't give, I would be owed 15p change, and with one more coin, that's not possible. Um, so let's say that if I went for, let's say, 85p um, or 90p, again, I couldn't give the right change just in one coin. Um, so there is one other possible solution, and that is if I pay with a pound, I'm going to need how much change then? Well, it'll be 35p that I'll need. Is there a way of making that 35p with three coins? So four coins are exchanged. Yep, this would be quite a common one. The shopkeeper could give me 35p change. So how many answers have we found there? We have found a whopping five. So today is called Equal More Less, where we look at equal signs, greater than and less than signs, and see the underlying meaning behind them. Uh, that will then lead us into doing some problem solving. So we're going to be really thought provoking and help you again with, with lo loads of the different maths you'll do in lots of curriculum areas as well. Um, so let's first of all have a look at how number sen sentences are built. So let's say, for example, here, um, a way that we could describe this, th this image is that 3 plus 2, so the 3 that are blue and the 2 that are orange, is the same as 4 plus 1. And this equal sign means the same. They're, that's the same amount. We've got 5 here and 5 there. And again, 5 here and 5 here. It's the same amount either side of the equal sign. Um, so th this question corresponds to that image really and sometimes the mistakes that are made are this uh, We just think that this uh, this missing number is made just by adding three and two So we might think it's five or maybe we think it's six because we add up everything we see see lots of add signs and three numbers three plus two plus 
But actually the answer, as we saw, was 4, because 3 plus 2 is 5, and then 4 plus 1 is 5, and that equal sign means the same as. Which, of course, is shown in that image. This is exactly the same question, except I just have this 4 displayed here. Um, so what, what about this one? A number sentence that describes that? Well, here at the top, I've got 3 plus 3. And at the bottom, I've got 8. And, well, they're not the same. 8 is more. Uh, so 3 plus 3 is less. 8 is more. So we have our, our inequality sign. That's not the same. And which is more? We see the, the wider sign going towards the 8. Um, but if we did 3 plus 3... Uh, and then we had 8 subtract 2, so we took away these two, then it is an equal sign, because that is the same. Because this is 3 plus 3, and then this was 8, and I subtracted those two, and look, they're the same, because both are 6. So, have a look here. Is each number sentence correct or not correct in the use of the equal signs and then in the, in the use of the greater and the less than signs? Pause the video and have a look at each one, correct or not correct. And then when you're ready, let's have a little look. Um, so 8 plus 3 equals 5. Yeah, 8, eight subtract 3. Sorry, 8 subtract 3 equals 5. Yes, 8 subtract 3, Gareth, equal, is 5. And this is a 5. So 5 and 5, they are the same. How about 5 equals 3 subtract 8? Is that true? Is 5 the same as 3 subtract 8? Well, no, actually, a 3 subtract 8 is actually negative 5, so they're, they're not the same. And again, you might not have come across negative numbers yet, but we just know that 3 subtract 8, that actually isn't the same as 5. Now, 6 plus 2 equals 8 subtract 3, is that true? Well, 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 subtract 3 is 5, so no, that's incorrect, because they're not the same, they're not equivalent. What, 3 plus 2 equals 8 subtract 3? Yeah, they're, they're the same, both being 5. Um, 4 plus 3, is that greater than 6? Yes, 4 plus 3 is 7, that is greater than 6. And what about 4 plus 3 and 6 plus 2? Well, 4 plus 3 is 7, 6 plus 2 is 8, so no, this is the wrong way around, because actually this side is the smaller side, uh, 6 plus 2 is more. Okay, now that will hopefully give you some skills to have a go at this task. So use these digits to complete the number sentences. Uh, you can only use each digit once. So have a think, where are you going to start? Uh, which, which numbers are you going to position first? Uh, which one will you do next? And so on. And can we, can we see if we can complete this puzzle uh, using each number only once? Uh, pause the video and have a go. Okay, and let's have a look. Now, I started from this bottom one here, because in this number sentence, there's only one missing number. I don't have to think about combinations. I just need to think about one possibility. 12 subtract a number equals three, a part of three, and this part equals 12. That one is nine. Um, and so then where next? Well, actually I, I looked at combinations of numbers that add to, so that they'll be the same as 14, eight and six. And that leaves my two and my four. And then I just need to think, well, which way around so that both sides are the same? Well, if I put my four there, five plus four, that's nine. Seven plus two is nine. So this is nine and that's nine. And yes, now they are the same. So here's your main task today. And you can really have, to, there's an added challenge here because we've got this sign that, that's come in here, this inequality sign here. So these two sides are no longer the same. And think about where are you going to start from this time? So use these digits to complete the number sentences. You can only use each digit once. So it's your main task today. Pause the video. Enjoy. Have a go. Right, let's have a look. One of the key skills with a task like this is thinking, well, where do I actually start? And for my, my suggestion for this one is to start here. Because there's only actually one way to complete that nine line, those numbers where the difference is six. And the only way it can be done with the numbers that we have is nine subtract three. They're the only two numbers with a difference of six. Now, this line, there's now only one way to complete this line with the numbers that were left. We could have used the nine, but of course we needed it for the middle row. Um, and it's got to be more than 10 that side, so it must be the eight. Three plus eight is 11, that's more than 10. Um, and so that leaves us needing to fill in that top line, we need to make them the same. So 20 subtract 7 is 13, 
8 plus 5 is 13. There we go. They're now the same. Positioned absolutely perfectly. Now, if you've got room for some more, click on the blue link underneath the video. Have a look at these examples here. So some of these number sentences only have one possible answer, but some have different answers. So I wonder which questions uh, only have one answer, which have different numbers of answers. If you want to extend yourself, how many answers do they have uh, for the examples here? Okay, so good luck with that, uh, and I'll see you again tomorrow.